Hi friends, the story I have for you is called Back of the Bus. Now, th this is written by Aaron Reynolds and illustrated by Floyd Cooper. This story is about a woman named Rosa Parks. Now, back when Rosa Parks was alive, the African American people had to sit in the back of the bus and the white people could sit in the front of the bus. But one day, Rosa Parks said, nope, I'm not doing that. And she sat in the front of the bus. This is a story of a boy's perspective who was sitting in the back of the bus and was watching what happened to Rosa Parks. December 1st, 1955, Montgomery, Alabama. Winter's here in Montgomery, but I got the window down and a warm breeze blowing in as Mama and me huffed down Cleveland Avenue on the big old bus. We're sitting right where we're supposed to, way in back. I take out my marble, all shiny and bright, like a big old tiger's eye, and lay it on the grooves in the aisle. The bus slows down and that marble rolls and rolls, but a dark hand jumps out from a seat up front and grabs my marble good. But it's just Mrs. Parks from the tailor shop. She looks back smiling, flings a wink at me, and sets that marble back in its groove. That bus takes off again and my marble comes right back to me like I got it on a string. Mama shakes no at me and I hold it snug in my hand. She's got them worked all day eyes, but she's got her strong chin on. There's Rosa Parks right here. The bus slams to a stop, doors slinging open, and people piling on, all crammed like lima beans. That long, dark aisle all packed in, jammed up tight, and I'm glad my marble's tucked in safe. Y'all gotta move now. It's Mr. Blake, the driver. I can't see him because of the people jam, but I know that growly old voice. Some folks get up, new ones sit down, but still that bus is sitting there stopped. Why ain't we going, Mama? I say all soft. Hush, child, she says, and I do. Somebody's talking back, but I can't hear the words. Just Mr. Blake saying, I'm going to call the police now. We sit and sit, not going no place. Nothing to do but sweat, so I roll my marble on that sticky old seat and catch it before it goes down the crack. But Mama says, put it away, child. I hear Mama's crinkled up something's wrong voice, and I hunker that brown tiger's eye down deep into my pocket like it's hiding. Some folks look back, giving us angry eyes. We do something wrong, Mama? I say all soft. No, we ain't, she says. But I ain't sure, because I'm getting shaky legs. Same folks are doing mean, scratchy whispers at somebody sitting up front. And then I see who it is, from way in back. Mrs. Parks, that's who... She don't belong up front like that, and them folks all know it. But she's sitting right there, her eyes all fierce like a lightning storm, like maybe she does belong up there, and I start thinking maybe she does too. Fifteen whole minutes we sit, but it feels like a big bunch more. That breeze is long gone, and I want me a drink real bad. But then the policeman comes. He walks right on my bus. I'm all shaky inside now. Them lima bean people spread aside, and he stops at that way up front seat. Why won't you move and give this man your seat? 
he says to Mrs. Parks, but she don't move. She's just sitting in that seat like a turn-up pile. I don't think I should have to stand up, she says. Why do you push us folks around? Her voice is all soft, but she's got on her strong chin too, just like Mama does. That policeman clicks some metal things on her hands, quick and loud like the screen door slamming, and off the bus they go. More people sit, and the air ain't warm no more. She's getting hauled off to jail, or worse, and I'm watching out the window. Mama, too, with them long, tired eyes. There you go, Rosa Parks, stirring up a nest of hornets, Mama's, Mama's saying in her to-herself voice. But I hear. I see something, too. She's got Mrs. Parks' lightning storm eyes now. We in trouble, Mama? I say all soft. No, we ain't, she says. Don't you worry none. Tomorrow's all, tomorrow, all this'll be forgotten. But I got something in me, all pale and punchy, saying it won't be. Don't know why, but instead of feeling all shaky, I feel a little strong, like Mama's chin. I take out my marble and start to hide it in my squeezy tight fist. But instead, I hold it up to the light, right out in the open. That thing shines all brown and golden in the sunlight, like it's smiling, I think, because it ain't got to hide no more. The end.